Hey everyone, today we're going to take, well, today we're going to do something different. Today we're going to take this piece of wood and these two rocks and we're going to carve this into a critter and make these into eyes and then we're going to put them in the eyes in the critter. Okay? I find a stone and take it home and polish it and hope it shines and also there's a chicken. Hey everyone, this is Clayton, and like I said, we're going to take these rocks, make them into eyes, carve this into a critter, and set the eyes in there. Okay, so I wasn't sure what kind of critter to make. Let's set the eyeballs over here. They'll be watching. And we've got the honor roll pencil of destiny. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I said I wasn't sure what kind of critter I wanted to make. And I was looking at patterns, and I'm like, you know what? No, we're going to make our own critter. Because that's what we do. Okay, so I had an idea. Probably it would be good to do an owl. Because, you know, they got big old eyes like that. Or at least the cartoon ones do. But owls have pretty big eyes. And owls would be kind of easy to draw. So let me so I can sort of sketch out an owl here. This will be the front, and this will be the profile. Profile. Front. Like, I really need to put that on there, but I did anyway. <sighs> okay, now. All right, so I'll just do a... Let's see, here's the Hootie Owl's head. I start with a circle. Yep. And give him a fat body. And this is going to be a stylized critter. And looks more like Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. Can you see that drawing on there? No, you can't. Let me adjust this. Can't see it that way either. It's awfully bright. Ah ha! Maybe that's better. Okay, you can sort of see what I have sketched out there. <clears throat> and we'll have a base down here. Of course, I'll make this squared off. So let's see the hoot owls. But I don't make him a great horned owl. Maybe he has horns. I don't know. But we'll make that body come around something like that. Ooh, hoot, hoot owl head. I could draw this pattern out on a piece of paper and then put it onto here. But why would we do that? Why would we do something that almost seems normal? Okay, there's this tufts of the great horned owl. Turn his tufts out, make them a little bit bigger. How's that? Ooh, yeah, I like that. Remember, nature is not symmetrical. So here's here's his body. We'll make his head come down this way so he can have big old eyes. Let's see, there's center line. There's his eyebrow line. <coughs> and we'll make his beak beak like that. It'll come down. And then we can have two big old hootie owl eyes in there like that. Hoot! Hoot. Okay, so there's our outline. Right there. Maybe a little bit of an arc on there, like so. And that comes out like that. And there comes down the body. And there's the base. And there's our... Hoot owl. Hoot. Okay, the eyes have it. So I'm gonna go cut out the silhouette and I shall be right back. Don't go away. Alrighty, I'm back. And there we are. We've got the 
front cut out. The front, well, the front silhouette, the front profile. I don't know, we cut the front of it out. And I found out something today. My saw blades are exceedingly dull. So dull, 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 dull. Okay, now usually I would take and cut, cut away on the profile this way to, to, uh, you know, make it easier taking away wood, but I don't think I'm going to have to on this one. So the first thing that we have to do is I will make a mark on the center line here. That's pretty much the center. Close enough for us. I give myself some guidelines here. And look, you got a lop eared ear. So I will be. Here's the beak. So the beak's going to be there. So the head's going to come up like this. And the ears are going to be there like so. And the back of his head's going to be uh, fairly wide. His beak's going to be all beaky. The beaky beak of beakiness will be there. And the body's going to come out fluffy round like that. Down around. He's going to you know, give him a pot belly. That sounds good. So there's an idea of what I'm going to do. The beaky beak of beakiness. Da -da -da. Dum -da -dum. You can see this is sort of how I do my do my carvings. So I can actually start on this now. There's about the center line. I don't always need a center line that way, but sometimes it helps. The beaky beak of beakiness will be there. I sort of kind of come down like so. Like so. If this seems a little boring, it might be, but we're going to get a little more exciting here in a moment. Just sort of transfer all these marks to one side or the other so I can start. And this is going to come down this way, like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're close. Oh, didn't put a center line up here. Can't be without center lines. Ooh, look at Bullseye. Woohoo. Let's give her some idea of what we got going. There, there, there. I'm hoping you can see these pencil lines on there okay so now we need a knife right back and I'm back with my wait and I'm back with my old timer pocket knife so if you wondered how I did this this is how I did it or do do the carvings so I just have to start I'm gonna make a V cut here And this is, this wood, if anybody's curious, this is pine. And if it looks like I'm going to cut myself, yeah, I've, done, I've been known to do that. It happens. I'm going to start here. Start making some line cuts. This is like, this is the first time I've done something exactly like this. So the starting out part is really kind of, iffy because you, you don't know what you're you, you know you got to start somewhere but you know you just got to start somewhere okay so it's going to be a slight divot the whole way around here and my, when my hands were good I would be able to just hold this in my lap and do it or just hold on to it and rawr, 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 like that. But the old fingers don't quite work that way anymore. Maybe I'll bring this up like that. Yeah, I believe so. Now some people carve with a Dremel and they can put all these 
marks in fairly easy, which, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. Nothing. Trying to transfer my line to there so I have an idea of where I'm going. The idea is to just get the wood away. I do got some strength left. I picked this piece of pine out because pine's fairly easy to deal with and I don't want to deal with a hard, hard wood today. Hmm, oh, got a little bit more strength in my fingers than I thought. Makes me happy. And yes, I have been doing this and going slice right across there and oh, the language it was used, terrible. And there was a lot of jumping up and down involved with that too. Pine is a nice wood to work with. It, it's soft, but see it has a really wide grain so you get splinters the wood splinters if you're not very care if you're not really careful with it. So that makes it somewhat undesirable for highly detailed stuff. But for uh, something stylized, no, it, it's not really a big issue with that. Ooh. You see that long see that piece just flew off of there. I didn't want that all to come off. I sort of wanted to chip away at it piece little bit by bit to get the to get down to where I want it to be. And that's the other thing about pine, it chips apart pretty easy. So you gotta make a stop cut, you go like this, make a cut there, get straight down in and then pull your cut down to it. And then that chip won't phoom, throw the rest of that off. Like there I'm making a stop cut there, just cutting that down in a little bit. And then I can chip those pieces right out and it'll stop where I want it to and won't go any farther. Maybe I haven't lost my touch. Guess if you do things enough you don't forget it. Depending on how long this takes I may speed the video up or edit it. That'll basically, yeah, I don't know what you all want to see. This is, I know this is a channel one cutting rocks, but there's going to be rocks in it. Going to have the Red Eye Express bird. <laughs> yeah, I got to bring this down. I'm going to have to make a lot of stop cuts here. Because when it sets, it's going to set on that base like so. So it's like, boop. I don't want to be cutting that base off. Maybe I'll put a tail of sorts in here. Why? Because we can. Is that how a hoot owl's tail goes? I don't know. That's how this hoot owl's tail is going to go. Everybody okay with that? Hoot, hoot, hoot. I used to remember. What the heck is that? Oh, wow. There's a... I wonder if I can get that out of there. There's like a branch that... That <laughs> was growing. Started off in the tree and got growed. Or, the tree growed around it. Growed. That's the word of the day. Growed. There's still more of it right there, if you can see down in there. There it is, see? I'll make this owl's big fat belly come out to the front and cover up his feet. But not his hoot owl tail. 
Can't cover up the hootie owl tail. Oh, I remember having piles of wood chips and laying on the living room floor as I would sit there and carve, watching Monty Python and Benny Hill. <laughs> Everything's coming together since I mentioned that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Nope, seriously, that's my, like, my favorite TV show. Monty Python is probably my favorite TV show of all time. There's nothing just better than rampant lunacy. Whenever I carve like this, I don't stay at one spot and do a whole lot. I have to sort of picture it as it comes together and keep cutting around from place to place. I do that when I sculpt too. I just can't sculpt start here and sculpt up. I end up sculpting the entire thing as I see it coming together in my mind as it's fighting upstream against the Monty Python images. I like stylized forms. I may end up using the Dremel on this. To oh, you see that big flake? That's what stinks about pine is you will get big flakes like that that come off and there's not really much you can do about it if it was a tighter grained wood like poplar poplars are really good wood to carve it's harder to carve the grain is much much denser and you can cut much finer finer lines on it okay mr beak came the whole way down to here I'll be cutting this back to get into the beak. And if we get through it and find out that I'm not doing it, well, then we'll just do another one. We'll put this in the box of the the box we went through a couple weeks ago on with all the unfinished and buggered up projects. That's where the box of buggered up projects came from. Experimenting with new stuff. Experimenting. That's the second word of the day. I'm going to have to soon start shaping the head down. Got a good bit to go on here yet. But it's coming along nicely. Something like this is not a speedy process. Whoa! Whoa! Chips flying everywhere. The idea is to get this point to this point in a nice smooth arc. So I've got to battle the tight grain as I go. I hope you can see this well enough. Let me check. I don't know if I should zoom in. Let me try zooming in a little bit as I carve. See if that helps. I just don't want to get too far out of the out of the frame. That's not too bad. The hoodie owl's big fat belly is there. Yeah, I'm getting somewhat of a round up. I've still got a lot to go here. Still got a lot to go here too. But I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful back here because I want to bring this out so you know I, I'm gonna actually maybe do a stop cut there without slicing my thumb off there that didn't turn out too bad I, and honestly, I have never carved an owl similar to this before. This is absolutely a new, a new one. So I am just making this up as I go along. But I make everything up as I go along. Okay, 
it just makes it more interesting that way. I know there's a cut somewhere. There it is. Definitely got to make some stop cuts in there. Oh, that knot thingy right there is going to be an annoyance. This might be a long video. It may end up being in two parts. Carving the critter and then carving out the eyes, well, grinding on the eyes. Hmm. I definitely have to go deeper here. Boy, this is actually, like I said, I usually would sit on the floor with my back against the couch, laying with a blanket down to catch all the wood chips. And I never carved on a table like I'm doing now. And man, that's actually kind of, wow, I'm, I'm, I can lay it against the table and actually do some nicer cuts. All those years, all those years, <laughs> never too old to learn something. Of course, all those years, I didn't have a rock cutting table in front of me. He's lopsided. We can fix that. Hey, we can fix anything. Okay, almost everything. Anything. Ooh, look at that. Darn big cut. Didn't want to do that. I don't think it'll affect it too badly. No, we're getting down there. It's better to take off too little at a time than it is to take off a giant monster hunk and then go, oh, that shouldn't have come off. I said this is going to be a stylized owl. Very stylized. Because, well, because. Okay, I'm getting up to about the center point here where it's starting to get somewhat of a rounded shape to it.
I have to bring this in a little bit, I guess. Yes, I am tickled with being able to press down on this table. Try not to do too much of these ears because they will, they're going to be tiny and they'll break off. It won't be like a, it'll be more like a snap with swearing afterwards. Actually, I probably could use some money Python to watch while I'm doing this or listening to it. I think I'm going to get myself some cuts around here too. Whoa! Yeah, I got hunks of, hunks of hunk of flying everywhere. There's hunks of hunks of flying everywhere here. It's pandelirium. wonder what kind of finish to put on this guy then maybe it's not maybe it's a girl I don't know anybody know how to tell the difference between a male and a female hootie owl I don't want it to look like a snowman so I'm gonna have to careful about how I trim this up. If it looks like a snowman, then it'll be a snowy owl. Whenever I sculpt, you know, sculpt something in clay, I sort of have to snicker because I'm doing in reverse what I do here. I'm adding little chips pieces of clay <laughs> and here I'm taking off little chips and it's strange that sculpting came so easy whenever I'm doing something backwards than I'm used to doing Sometimes I would take the long blade if I needed to make a nice clean stop cut. Do that whole length like that. I have the long blade. How oh, sharp is that long blade? Oh, it's not too bad. I sort of prefer I get more leverage with this one. Just prefer it. Not sure why, but I do. Mm hmm.
you notice my hand, I go to all different types of techniques for cutting. It all depends on exactly how the area is I need to cut is. Is. How many times can I put is in that sentence? Definitely start to look like a snowman. Gotta remember to keep that up here into the camera. May cut too much away here. Would have rather had it down like that. Hmm. Oh well. You know what? We'll fix it. Ouch! Poking my finger. Oh, I'm going to have to start working on this head. Yeah, there goes one of those big chips I don't want. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's see. There's the... That's more centered right there. His beak's gonna be about there. So. I'll make that go into his ears. Dookie. Ah, cutting the beak. Carefully. Yeah, flew right up in. Yeah, it went down my shirt. Yeah, there it is. Whew. I mean, it's not like it burns or anything, but it's just sort of scritchy. It's scritchy. Careful. Ah. 
I was just going to say, if I run out of the camera, tell me. But if you can actually see this right now, there's something really freaky going on. And I would be afraid. I'd be scared. Somebody wants me. Aha! Didn't want to come down that far. Yeah, it looks a little off-center. But have you ever looked at a hooty owl whose beak wasn't off-center? I don't think so. Hmm. I think I might clean up some of this. Some of these wood shavings. 